We're going to be talking now about robot rebuilds. So in the Discord and on Cheap Delphi, there were a lot of you know pictures and stories, and that was really cool. So in chat, besides typing in Get to the Hopper, why don't you guys tell us about some of your favorite robot rebuilds? I was interested. Um, I was looking through the Discord before the show, and it looked like 217 did a lot of like during season modifications, which good for them because they ended up being world champs. Um, <laughs> So it's always like really cool to see teams that are like, you know what, screw it, we're chopping this off, we're gonna completely do this instead during the season. Like that is commitment and you know confidence. But I always do admire teams that go and just completely like as soon as the season's over, whether it's you know after one of their mid-season events or you know after champs, they just start completely new based on some of the stuff that they had seen um, during the season. So let's see what people are saying. Um, I, another one that we saw a lot of was 2655 in 2018. So that's the flying platypi. Um, it looks like they completely chopped off the top half of their robot uh, during power up. Um, so they went from being, you know, an elevator that kind of worked and said, you know what, this isn't doing it and went to a uh, switch kind of robot. Uh, <laughs> Connor McBride said 23 <laughs> or 6328 in 2019. Obviously, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Um Somebody just said, my team at competition, elevator completely failed, um, came all the way off, stripped it all off, and put, like, quote, 10 sim sims for ballast and defense bot only. That sounds like a very New England thing to do. Um, <laughs> 4697 made pretty much the same mods as 2655, so that's pretty interesting. Oh, in 2018, that seems relevant. Um, so, Sarah, did you? Are there any robots that stick out to you that you know either during the season or post season that did like complete changes that you liked a lot? Uh, well, um, I liked it because it was funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know, the Australian robots arrived back in Australia the day before our only off season, the Duel Down Under started. So, um, most of the teams were able to compete with their robots as a result, which was fantastic. However, uh, for those watching, Einstein will know uh, 3132's robot actually broke as during that time frame. So and it wasn't fully repaired. And we kept thinking the crate was going to get back in time. So we didn't get our practice robot up to speed. So about a week ahead of time, we did the only sensible thing. We took our training squad, our JV team from uh, their power up robot, and we modified it slightly and it went and it played at the Duel Down Under. So it was a robot designed for power up playing Destination Deep Space. Um, and the thing that, you know, you just have fun with it at that point, right? You, you just, you're going for it. it, it it's all it. about the fun and how far can we go with a robot not designed for this year's game? So the team number for those who don't know is Lightning Bots 5331. So the bumpers became 533132, um, and the FTA approved it. So we just added those two numbers to the end. Um, and then, I mean, obviously at that point you have to have a Guitar Hero controller to control it because how else would you do it? So it had an arm, and the tilt on the arm was how it got controlled. And you know what? They ended up being the second pick of the number seven alliance, and they beat number two and made it to the semis. So hey. you just have fun with it and see what comes along, because sometimes you just got to roll with the punches. And when <laughs> FedEx decides to put your robot on a boat instead of a plane, and it takes months <laughs> to get there from championship, and then there's bad weather and it gets delayed twice, you go with it and have fun. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> you know, I think that's part of being an international first team. You can yep. either choose to see it as a nightmare or you can just have fun. And, you know, we're going to just have fun because yeah. why not? I think you guys are the official first happening of bots on yachts, you know, <laughs> you know robots on boats. So I'm, it, I'm curious how, like, they actually controlled the robot with the Guitar Hero player. That's That photo that came up was really good. <laughs> we're also fortunate to have a great driver who just you know has fun with it and just goes with anything so why not <laughs> well if you guys are ever in need of more off-season events you can come to new england where there's a gajillion um all off-season so speaking about a gajillion off-seasons uh 60 through 28 i know that you guys have been doing non-stop stuff um, in the off season, and you guys debuted an epic new robot. So you built not only one robot that you know raked in a couple blue banners, but you built a second one. So what was that like 
building a second robot. Why did you do it? What kind of inspired your new um, design and how has it been going? It was so much fun. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, so 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 we, uh, we looked at our old robot and obviously we had some success with that, but we, but we decided, you know, for training, um, you know, why not, why not build another one? Yeah, so it was, like, um, it was like three days after Worlds. We all had exactly. like slept a little bit. Uh-huh. I, I could sleep anyway. Uh-huh. I think, I think the topic was, was first brought up like at the airport on the way home from Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and so, uh, and so we, we based our designs off of other teams. Um, we had manipulators from 1114 and 2056. Um, our climber was cheesecake straight from 2168. Um, our drivetrain was from 228. Uh, we have a mentor from there, and um, and and we, we got it all. We got it all. Um, it, it's a sheet metal robot. And we got it all done with one of our sponsors, ETF Manufacturing. Um, <laughs> that that really helped. It was it was a lot less intense than our regular robot, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all kind of needed a break, uh, but it gave people new opportunities to try new leadership roles, and it was so much yeah. fun. We, um, I know we were introduced to, or we did a bunch of drawings too, which I thought was really cool to do, because before we hadn't really done a bunch of drawings. So now that we did drawings in the off season, I think it's like a really new, like kind of experience to have. I know some younger kids were doing drawings, and it's really cool to not only do CAD or SolidWorks, but to know how to format a bill of materials and format drawings on how to actually build it or bend it, because I. I've never really done that before. And as a first time of doing it, I thought it was really cool. And interesting. You know, and it's, it seems like it's the opportune time to do it. If you have like, you know, the, the time, the motivation and the ability to do it, like, because like you were saying, like you had never done it before. I can't imagine trying to do that for the first time, like right after kickoff with, <laughs> you know, not that we have a bag day anymore, but obviously there's a lot more at stake at that point. And it seems like you guys had a lot of fun doing it. So how, how long did it take you to go from, you know, talking about it at the airport to actually finishing it before um, your first off-season competition? So, um, overall, yeah, I'd say around five weeks. We had yeah. it done maybe a week before Battle Cry. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was it was somewhat like your typical um, your, your typical time frame. You know, we had roughly six weeks. Although, of course, um, you know, we, we we didn't go through the full prototyping stages as. Um, we yeah, can, we yeah. kind of use the best ideas from other teams. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think like scheduling wise, I think we met. We started like two or three times yeah. a week, and uh -huh. then towards the end, it was a little more like uh, like three, three or four. four. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but then we did like the whole reveal video too, which was fun to film and like yeah. put that together mm -hmm. and share that with the first community. So I don't know. I think like I just saw you, you know everyone learned a lot, personally you girls learn a lot yeah. um, from mm -hmm. it. So I think it was a really valuable project. Um, and then obviously we went into battle cry, like not knowing what was gonna happen, yeah. but then mm -hmm. you know, managed pulling off an event win, which was just like really exciting. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, so it was kind of crazy. You yeah. Know? And it's a really good demo robot too. So we're uh -huh. bringing it all over the place now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I really happy that we did that. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Me too, it was so much fun. Yeah. And I think it's a great tradition to have you know, um, to to build um, a, at least one robot in the off season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what did we start it? Um, you you know, from a training perspective, and just and just have fun. I'm I'm sure you guys know that short period of withdrawal you go through after worlds. You know, it's like yeah, oh the my robot god, depression. what do I do with my life now? Yeah, that's me uh -huh. every single year. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, and I think even after the off-season competition, or we have another one coming up, but we've done a bunch of CAD trainings. Like even before this Skype call, we did we had a CAD <laughs> CAD meeting, and it's basically we're going over on shape and we're going over how to make certain parts. And I think it's really interesting to go over that even after off-season, not technically yeah. doing anything, but just like kind of fooling around with it so that you're prepared for the next season. 
And I think an, another big thing is because we bring in so many kids from FLL, we have a really young team. Mm -hmm. um, like more than half of our kids last year were in eighth and ninth grade. Yeah. So like the eighth graders, they did some training in the off season, you know, but they were also really busy with FLL at the time. So it was a really good opportunity for those rising ninth graders to, mm -hmm. to dive more into the technical stuff, like really learn CAD, like you're saying, drawings, yeah. how to design and manufacture and sheet metal. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there was, I don't know, it was, it was a super fun experience yeah, well, overall yeah. for uh -huh. sure um and now we kind of get to continue it like i think we're thinking about ways that we can improve it for we're going to mm -hmm. like because it's new england we're going to a ton of more off seasons like in vermont we're going to beantown that 125 hosts um robot rumble in new york um so we're going to keep iterating and, and it's a good like long-term project for the summer and the fall now too mm -hmm. we have a ton of fun with it too for instance on our off-season robot we put rubber chicken on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a joke it's great it's a joke but yeah it's fun we're uh -huh. goofy uh -huh, yeah, we're kind of weird but whatever <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really common thread between the two, right, is having fun with it. The off-season should be fun. It's that time to learn and really develop and grow as students and incoming students, and it's a great opportunity to do it. So it's so cool to see teams doing it. Um, yeah, it was definitely uh, – and, like, a good, like, team bonding experience, too, uh -huh. for everyone. Like, yeah. Like the older kids to get to know the younger kids who just came out of FLL. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, like – if you have the energy, if you have the resources, just send it. That would be my, my exactly. exactly. <laughs> All righty. So I totally lost Wi-Fi there for a little bit, but it seems like you guys were having a blast over here. Um, so <laughs> um, is there anything else you guys wanted to mention about your robot rebuild or Sarah, is there anything that you wanted to mention about your robots finally showing up after being on a boat for God only knows how long? <laughs> It's here. It's good. Well, not here because it's not in Boston. That'd be bad if it was in Boston. Uh, but <laughs> it's in Sydney. <laughs> That's good. I don't know, Julie. Yeah, so um, one of my personal favorite robot rebuilds was uh, 148's robot rebuild in 2017. Tiny little bolt. Um, we had Adrian Emerson and her student at the time, uh, Madison, on to talk about their robot rebuild. They did a completely ridiculously small, fast gear runner. And this thing was like, so, so cool looking. And um, Maddie and a bunch of students were the ones that kind of took on the project of completely redesigning and making this like itty bitty, as they called it, like shop dog robot that just like zipped around. Um, there was a video on the fun Facebook page that somebody took of it just like zipping back and forth during an off season event. And it was like, holy potatoes, that thing <laughs> is fast. And of course it was like beautiful and like all black with like smoked out Lexan and like, you know, really nicely packaged. So that was personally like one of my favorite robot rebuilds. Um, kind of a pre-build robot that I was impressed by was in 20. 15 at Battle of the Bay, um, a pre-rookie team, Morpheus, which is like now a, a pretty good team in New England, built a robot for, you know, that off-season event in the late fall. And they like crushed it at that event and went on to have a pretty good rookie season. But like, what a poopy kind of pre-rookie like game to go and play. But, you know, they were pumped about it and they did really well while the rest of us were like, oh God, like, thank God this is the final off-season for <laughs> For recycle rush, so and you guys was the yeah. first year of regionals in Australia, which is oh, what? oh, that's a bad way to start. Yeah, <laughs> not a good was? way to start it, but uh, I mean, it's gone up from there. So, wow, so this is the fourth <laughs> year of regionals in Australia. <laughs> it was our fifth anniversary. Yeah, that's crazy. Fifth anniversary of the regionals and tenth anniversary of the team. It was a pretty big year. Oh. Well, that makes up for 2015's game completely sucking, so <laughs> it's fun. I'm scrolling through Chief Delphi um, willingly and <laughs> looking at some of these um, posts that people made suggesting some of their favorite robot rebuilds. Uh, 5553 from France, they did a crazy rebuild. It was like, it was really similar to um, the Flying Platypi, where, you know, first robot was, you know, 
elevator dude and then the other one was a little switch bot so that's really cool to see it must be fun to like go and do the complete opposite of what you had kind of planned for um 2016 robot not sure which team this is but they have a nice powder coated or spray painted frame that is yellow and purple um it looks itty bitty 3538 so um a 24 by 24 robot itty bitty um let's see somebody mentioned 558 um and I mean, which at what at what point their robot rebuild? You know, was it the twenty times they do it during the season, or was it in the off season? Um, Code Orange in twenty seventeen, they said in twenty seventeen we robot rebuilt our entire robot, save the drive base. Um, our original concept involved a feeder, only gear mech, two turrets, a giant intake, and a hopper that was undersized and underpowered. I remember seeing um, their initial design concept, and it was intense. Like, double shooter seemed super complicated. It looked really cool, um, but their rebuild was a lot simpler, and it seemed to do pretty well for them. Um, and... Uh, 4587's rebuild... Somebody wanted to know more about that. Oh, this one looks pretty cool. Um, 5460, they seem to do rebuilds quite a bit. They redid their robot in 2016. Um, this is, let's see. Yeah, so they're from Michigan, right? Yeah, so they, oh, wow. These pictures of them are really cool. Um, they said for the Troy District, we changed our shooter. Um, a 2017 style shooter. This ended up shooting better. We got a banner, but we focused too much on shooting, which caused us to not qualify for world champs. I feel like it's always a dice roll. It's like, you know, during the competition season, especially in a district where you're like, okay, we're going to, you know, just commit to this and completely change and see how it goes. Um, can be really risky, but sometimes there's a huge reward that comes with it. So it's always interesting to see that, especially... I mean, we're in a district in New England, and we see a lot of teams that kind of evolve as the season goes on. But we also see teams like 558 who show up to an event and completely rebuild their robot on load and night and seem to do pretty well every year with it. So it seems like it's a, a really big undertaking, whether you're doing it during the season or off season. Um, but I don't know. Seems worth it either way. And I think it's time for a giveaway. Um, so... As I said before, the keyword for tonight's giveaway, or keywords, is uh, get to the hopper. Um, so if you want to get a few of those in before Tyler draws, go and do that now for your chance to win the 8x10 print of Grace Hopper, who is pretty awesome. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the Grace Hopper thing is going to be really cool. Guys, just a couple reminders coming up on fun this weekend. Uh, we do have that uh, awesome uh, off-season event that, uh, man, how do you pronounce that, Christian? What do you think? Washtenaw? Somebody from Washtenaw? Michigan can probably correct us. Uh, Washtenaw Robots. Correct us. Yeah, Washtenaw Robots competition. Uh, so make sure you check that out uh, this Saturday on fun. Uh, some great teams, 10, 23, 16, 84, 28, 34, 33, 22, 36, 41, uh, 3707 World Champions. Scott Spots are joining it. Uh, a lot of good teams from Michigan. So make sure you go check that out. PJ says we did it right. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, uh, we did it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to go ahead and draw uh, for the winner. Don't forget, if you do win, please make sure you shoot a message to First Updates Now, either on Twitch or in our Discord. Uh, and that is your uh, how you claim your prize, because we got to make sure we do that. And uh, I can't believe I still have to say this, but last week, Christine, we did a uh, the uh, Valor CAD Challenge, right? And every single person asked me what information I need to mail them something. And so I don't know what's wrong with the youth oh, these man. days, but it seems like nobody <laughs> understands how to get a package anymore. So, uh, So first name, last name. Shipping address, preferably email. Those things help out. Uh, so please provide us that information uh, as well. So uh, Rooster2655 oh, is the winner. Uh, big nice. active person tonight. So congratulations, Rooster. You've won yourself yeah. the Grace Hopper poster. And thanks again to Christine and Wordplay all day. Christine, where can they find you uh, if they want more cool, uh, cool stuff? They want more cool stuff. They can go to Etsy.com backslash shop backslash Wordplay yeah. all day. Can't say the F word here anymore, right? So... Nah. First. <laughs> First. <laughs>
Oh, well. All right. Um, so, yeah. So that's where you can go for that. Um, Deanna, do your kids know how to address an envelope and put in information that their computer doesn't auto, you know, fill for them when they're getting something shipped to them? I don't know. Do you? Well, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else, but you, you're we, familiar with the postal people. service? Yeah. 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 Thing, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> it's kind of important. <laughs> it's a good thing to know. Like, yeah, like send your rent check. Sometimes you can't do it online. Oh, like, I gotta send mine in, in snail mail. So uh, it's that, that's weird to think about. Right? <laughs> don't, don't don't think about it while you don't have to. <laughs> so, congrats to our winner for tonight. And um, before we wrap things up, Sarah, is there anything that you want to let everybody know that you want to plug um, before we sign off tonight? Just keep watching the Compass Alliance for cool stuff. We've got stuff planned for this off season, so keep stay tuned. Lots of stuff coming. That sounds exciting. And Deanna and everybody on Mechanical Advantage over there. What about you guys? Anything exciting that we should all know about and keep an eye out for? Um, wait a few months. <laughs> wait a few months. I, I guess they know something I don't. <laughs> Um, I guess look out for us at Robot Rumble at the mm -hmm. offseason in yeah. Boston Spa, New York. Um, apparently they're planning something I don't know about, so I'll be surprised too. <laughs> when When is that event? Um, October 26th. Nice. And you guys are attending Beantown Blitz, I've we heard. We are, and we're bringing our FLL kids to Beantown Blitz, so nice. you might see Robot on its face a lot, but oh, wow. we're inspired <laughs> young minds. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for tonight's Roast and Robots. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and hanging on as, you know, things have crashed or if I have magically disappeared. Um, and thank you for everyone who's helped make this show possible. Huge thank you to our amazing guests tonight and Tyler, of course. Um, and fun fans, we do rely on you to keep fun going. So please consider subscribing or donating bits, which I still don't really understand what they are, but I know that they're a good thing. Um, pledging your support on Patreon. And the most important thing that you can do is let others know about fun and shows like Roast and Robots and click that follow button. We also have a Discord where you can join over 1,700 other people and talk after the show. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and the Gram and Twitter and sometimes Snapchat, but you should probably wait on that because I don't think there's anything going on right now. Um, but you can follow Snapchat fun on first updates now, so you should definitely go do that. So, Tyler, let us know who supported the show this evening. Yeah, we'll read off uh, who supported us since our last show came through, so shout-outs to uh, TackleBat for 10 months of support, Alex DY42 Tier 1 Sub, Inner Camino Tier 1 Sub, Phil McJoe 234 Tier 1 Sub, CDF Man Tier 1, Simon Mash, 3 months support, thank you, Exalted One, uh, lots of bits today, thank you so much, Exalted One, let's, uh, we got to count those up, I know we got them somewhere on here. As I can see my screen. Exalted One with a thousand bits today. Thank you so much uh, for all that awesome support. Uh, also, some bits from uh, C. McBride. Thank you very much. Brando 125, 26 months of support. Thanks a lot, buddy. And once again, thank you to everybody. Uh, if we ever miss you, please let us know. We'd love to uh, make sure you do get recognized. Uh, let's also recognize Maximum 43, who just resubscribed there. Thanks a lot and appreciate your support. Yeah. All right. So on behalf of myself and our producer, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. And thanks to all of our moderators and chat for keeping things GP. And we'll see you next time on Roast and Robots. Talk to you then. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.